Hi, welcome to MMA UK with me, Danny Bruff. I'm joined with Levi Stephen. Levi, I finally got you on, finally. Yeah, finally. Finally got a bit of time. I oh, know, you stood me up on Valentine's Day. What's I going know. on? <laughs> Sorry. Is you this know... someone special we need to know about? <laughs> no, just too busy, too busy all the time. <laughs> too tired mostly, actually. I'm not surprised, I actually saw you. Not last Saturday, Saturday before in the gym. I didn't want to come and bother you because you were teaching. I was in oh. there with my little lad, yeah, yeah. All oh, right. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was probably too busy teaching, as usual, <laughs> doing something. Yeah. No, yeah. it's good to see you teaching. Like I say, I really enjoy seeing you like, at work. You know, not only learning, but actually passing it down to the little ones. It's really good how you yeah. taught them all in that. Have got you been the, doing it the, yeah. long? Um, yeah. I um, can't remember how long it's been going on for now because we've we've had like the Growing Gorillas program. I think it's over definitely over a year anyway. Um, so yeah, that's coming on leaps and bounds, and it's really nice to coach the kids as well because, although it can be a bit frustrating, but it's like it's a different approach and a different style. But you get to pass on obviously the knowledge as well, which is really nice to see and see them progress, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, um, sorry, just before Christmas in Budo, we uh, retained the Budo Championship. Yeah. I've been trying to keep up with what's coming next. You had a fight, you didn't have a fight, you had a fight, you didn't have a fight. Now something completely new has come up. Do you want to just explain a bit about what's going on? Yeah, um, so it's a funny one because I had a fight booked on Budo 14th of March, I think it was. Um, yeah. And then that fell through. <clears throat> the girl pulled out, I think it was Lauren Bellis pulled out. Um, I think she was moving gyms or something. I can't remember the actual excuse. And then, so I was just stuck with that fight. Um, and then Charlie Burke... Uh, her opponent pulled out, I think it was a week ago or might have been a little bit before that. So I'd seen it and I sent it to my coach and I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I sent it to my coach. Um, can you still see me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So something, just, something slightly happened. Um, and I was like, you know, this kind of, we may as well just go for it. And it's that catch weight, but I'm ready to fight anyway. Um, you know, Charlie's obviously ready to fight. So I was like, we may as well just do it because I don't want to, you know, be waiting forever you know waiting or it might get to like two days before the fight of that I was supposed to have and then they go oh we can't find you anything and then I've been waiting so I was like we may as well just get it you know done and it's come a little bit full circle for me and Charlie because obviously it's, it's a funny story um we had our first interclub together right. um so we had a like first MMA interclub was me and Charlie so and then now we're fighting each other you know an actual amateur MMA which so we've we've nice. progressed since but it's just just seems to happen, you know. We we both got <clears throat> that mutual, you know, respect for each other. But like you say, it's just a, you know, another fight, another bit of experience, and we just both took it, which is good. Because not a lot of people are taking fights. Um, yeah. you know, quite a lot of people are wanting to fight, but then they get offered, and then it never goes ahead. So it's it's good that we both accepted this one anyway. So go on, yeah. who, who won the first one? Not that it actually matters, but. It's just a draw, isn't it? Like, you, you never yeah, really know because yeah. you just, you know, they put both your hands up. But, like, we was very, you know, very fresh-faced into, into MMA at that point and both didn't really know anything or had any fights because, obviously, it was an interclub. So it was a bit of a taster and then now yeah. we're we're here now. So it's quite exciting. <laughs> yeah, obviously, both, both enjoying it as well. How are you finding it, SBJ? Love it. Love yeah. it. Absolutely love it, you know. Um, I feel like I'm a big part of, like, the... The family or the tribe, as we call it. Um, you know, been there for over four years now, so it's uh, feels like I've been there longer, actually. But yeah, it's it's really good. You know, got a lot of good training partners, um, coaching as well, and just progressing pretty much every single day. So more than happy to to be there and representing SVG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually saw you on uh, pulling no punches as well on Sky. Yeah, that was a that was a fun day actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite random because I, I didn't know like until like I think it was a day or two days before it happened, um, and then Jamie Hay just messaged and was like, "Do you want to be on it?" So I was like, "Yeah, all right." And then so Brilliant. got a got a lift off uh, Martin Stapleton, and that was a that was a fun drive as well, and just kind of got to speak to the guys and everything, which was really good and just a bit of a different experience. But it was nice to be you know, included in that as well, and, you know, being recognised for being a good amateur, amateur prospect as well, which is, which yeah. is always good. But it's never yeah. good seeing your face on TV, especially when you, <laughs> you're, not, you're not prepared for it and you're just waiting there like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bit it weird, good, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously since Budo, 
Christmas come up? You've been continually training, have a bit of downtime, enjoy yourself? Yeah, um, I don't even think I've really took time out really because only over over Christmas when obviously the gym was closed um, and then we had like reduced times obviously we didn't have normal classes on but we had like open mats or we had certain classes on Um, because I work as well so I'll train in the morning then I'll go to work and then I'll come back in the evening Um, so it's like yeah just been constantly training because I enjoy training like there's nothing else that I do it sounds boring but like, I literally don't do anything else. So if I did have a day off, I'd be bored. I wouldn't know what, what to do, to be honest. So, yeah, just stayed stayed in shape, you know, and just basically was ticking over and knew I was going to fight in the new year anyway. So we just kept ready, basically. Yeah. Any idea on what your plans are after that? I know you, uh, you were really hoping to get on the Cage Warriors card. Yeah, um, I'm, devast- I'm absolutely devastated about uh, that. Um, cause they didn't, I didn't see anything about like any female fights. And then yeah. I think after I got the, my fight booked on Budo, they put out, they wanted a flyweight, um, for the title. But then I think that got took, took down and then everything fell through and then they didn't have anybody for that. So it was a bit, you know, frustrated, but we've got a load of fighters on there from SBG and I'm sure it's going to be, my door just opened on its own. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's going to be a really good, you know, promotion. I'm sure they're going to be back as well, you know, once once Jack uh, Cartwright knocks out his, you know, guy in about a minute, I'm sure they'll want us to come back to, to Manchester and I'll be the, you know, the first amateur begging to, to be on there. So yeah. it'd just be nice to fight in a home crowd. Like I've always gone somewhere different, you know, in the last 10 fights or whatever it is that I've had. So it would be nice to have a home crowd. But yeah, I think on, definitely it'll happen Monday. They're definitely yeah, going to be coming back, won't they? Yeah, with the amount of like talent that's up in the in the north, you know, the northwest, then they, they, I would say they would be back anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, just your time. gym alone, just your gym alone warrants some coming back. You know what I mean? Never mind yeah. everyone else. It's about that's it. We've got a lot on the card anyway, so you know it's going to be really good. And hopefully, you know, we all perform, and then they'll be definitely banging on the door to come back, which would be great to be on there. Yeah. So how's yeah. your training going for the fight that's upcoming? Obviously, I bet there's quite a buzzing atmosphere with Cage Warriors only a few weeks away as well. Yeah. Must be like getting pretty intense now. <clears throat> yeah, it's really good. Um, it's a funny thing, like, you know, it's dead cliche for fighters going, we don't have training camps, like, we were just constantly training. But it, it's actually true for SBG, like, nobody has any breaks. Like, they'll have a fight, they might have a day off or two days off, and then they're just back in training. We don't train for a fight. Like, we just train because we, we need to get better and we just adapt like that. Like, I never go into, a, like, a training camp, as people would say, thinking, right, I've got this fighter, I'm fighting, for, you know, I'm training to fight them. We just work on, um, you know, work on our strengths, work on, like, even our weaknesses as well. And it's just really good that like, everybody's, everybody who goes into a training team, especially in the pro team in the morning, like the fight team, you know, are there to progress. They're not there just to, to get, have a workout. They're there to, you know, work on their little goals that they've worked on, like I do myself. You know, I'm I'm training with all the professional guys, you know, who are even much bigger than me or much more experienced, but I've just got that little goal each time, like don't get taken down off this person or land more shots on this person or don't get hit off this person. So it's um it's really good. And, you know, one of my main training partners at the moment is uh, Jake Bond, who's also oh, yeah. on Cage Warriors London, I think it is. Um, a big fight button there. So I can't ask for a, a better training partner, you know, of a pro flyweight, you know, amazing wrestling, really good striking. So, um, it's happy days for me. And well, not happy days when I'm getting beat up, but <laughs> you know, when I'm pro- when I'm progressing and learning from these people, you know, I, I can't really ask for more to be honest. So, it's all yeah. good at SPG. Do you yeah. think that pressure that they have in boxing, you know, it's probably do you think it's a bit better for MMA that there's not so much pressure to win. Obviously, everyone wants to win, but it's not like the end of the world if you do we get a loss because, like I say, you learn from it always expected to win in this game anyway do you think that's that's something that makes it a little bit easier when you when you're going into that cage yeah I mean I don't I don't feel like that because I, I don't ever like put any extra pressure on myself because I got a sports psychologist probably I think it was about a year ago Rob Dawson nice. um, mind sport consulting and um he was like he, he basically was just like well what is pressure like you're only putting pressure on yourself nobody else is putting pressure on you so then I've, I've got like I've got rid of all that like I don't think about things I don't look at my opponents anymore like I used to just kind of obsess about it and I'd be the first person to admit I would look at them and think right this this and this or and I end up thinking so much about them that I've completely forgot about how good I am so mm-hmm. now like I, I just don't think about the pressure I just enjoy everything 
I just visualize everything as well. Like pretty much every single night, I'll visual, visualize my walkout, my song, getting into the you know getting into the cage, putting the grease on, everything from the touching gloves to to what I think I'm going to do. So um, that's like the new leaf I changed this like you know turn this year was just focus on myself. Um, it's funny, like I look like I'm in prison at the moment because like my room's just grey, but I've like completely took everything out of my room. I've gone very minimalistic. Um, I'm uh-huh. decorating at the moment, so like I'm just focused solely on MMA. So that's why I took the fight on two weeks' notice because like I'm ready. Whatever, let's just let's just go. Let's just do it. So I'm excited. Any <laughs> predictions for the night? I don't know. I don't like predicting. I hate predicting because uh-huh. I'm not good at gambling either. Like I won money on the Fury fight simply by luck and I just hate I hate predicting I just see what happens because you never know like you can look at somebody's like previous fights a hundred times over but then they might come out completely different to the last 10 times they fought or the last two times they fought so I'm just there to you know implement my game plan and just just win basically but you know Charlie's there to win as well so I'm not taking anything away from Charlie um I think we're gonna have a really good fight and I'm excited, you know, to, to get out there and, and fight again, which will be be really good. You, you begin to start enjoying these things and forgetting about, like, like say the added pressure. You just start yeah. enjoying it. You enjoy the crowd. You enjoy, like, making people, you know, proud as well, like, you know, getting into the cage. I've got a few of my friends from work coming as well who've always wanted to see me fight. So right. that'll be interesting for them. So, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be a good night. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah and um have you spoken to her before the fight obviously we were saying you know her anyway have you had a chat about it or um no we haven't but like you know like i said there's no animosity there's no you know i've not really had that with with anybody before like i tend to not speak to my opponents anyway like regardless of whether i know them or not um yeah. you know it's solely like not business because i'm not making any money out of this <laughs> but yeah. it is like business isn't it and you know like i said if i did see her would you know say hi we've not got no um we're not enemies you know we're just two two mma athletes that are, are just try to gain more experience in the amateur ranks and you know just so happen that we end we're going to end up fighting each other but that's the, that's the thing with female mma is that you know everyone's really nice but everyone's friends but you we're good we're probably going to end up fighting each other that's just how it is there's not a lot of us and yeah. um, I think, you know, a lot of people are going to train with each other and then it gets to a point where they go, oh, shit, I can't fight them because I spar them on Saturdays and I can't fight them because I go wrestling with them on the Wednesday. And it's all cool having that like MMA community, but it's got to come to a point where, we, you know, you kind of put that aside and go, right, we've just got to build experience on fighting each other. And that's, that's all it is, really. You know, you can be friends after it, which is absolutely fine by me. You know, I've... Yeah. Got uh, got nothing bad to say about it, to be honest. So, yeah. I know you're not in a rush to go pro, but do you think you'll be getting that maybe 2020, end of 2020, maybe next year? Um, Maybe next year, I think. Um, I said my goal was to have, like, 15 amateur fights. Um, This one on Saturday would be my 10th. So, you know, see how many I can get booked in. I got six booked in last year and six ticked off last year so we'll just see how it goes like I don't want to be um one of them people who like just um book fights with people that they like they think they can beat all the time like I do want good fights I want to have you know fight all different styles of people because then when you go pro like I've said this before in another interview I don't want to fight people who's not got like the best records and then when I go pro somebody who's half decent beats me and I think shit like because I've never come across that type of person before yeah. I've never you know or think I'm really good when, in fact, I need more experience. So, you know, try and get as much experience as possible and then just listen to my coach, Matt Inman, see what he says and see, you know, what goalposts we're going to put in and see where we end up, really. So, he's yeah. in the pipeline, gonna... obviously. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask that. Is it, how what's it, how's it work from going to where you are to the bro? Is, is it the head coach actually approaches you and says it? Do you actually ask him or is it like just mutual agreement and work it out? And... yeah. I think it's a mutual agreement, but also like, you know, I have my full um, faith in Matt. He knows what he's doing. He's been around the, the game a long time and I think he'll know when I'm ready as well. I think quite a lot of the time, especially for like, if you're like a perfectionist like myself, who's always like, you know, grading the performance and always thinking about like the next step is I'll probably never think I'm good enough, you know, to turn pro, but I will be. It's just yeah. that I need somebody like, you know, um, like a, a big influence like Matt to say, right, this is the next thing we're going to do. We're going to work on this. We're going to we're going to turn pro. Um, 
and then I'll just take it from there. So I don't feel like I'm, you know, too far off. I feel like my fight IQ is just getting better and better and better, you know, as the fights go on. Yeah. Um, and then with coaching as well, that obviously adds to it because, you you know, you're thinking about it more, you're correct, correcting where people are going wrong um, and going right. So it's uh, it's definitely on the horizon because, um, like I say, I'm, I'm taking this stuff even more seriously than I ever have because this is what I want to do as a career. I don't want to be working in an office for the rest of my life. Like, you know, it's not just about the money as well. It's about I've always done um, – some form of sport growing up and I've always wanted to be you know have my name in lights as my nana my nana says it all the time she's like you'll have your name in lights I'm like what does that mean but I kind of get what she means now and, <laughs> and like that's what you know that's what I'm aiming for is is to do that you know live live the dream as uh Stapes always says that every morning when he comes to training we're living the dream yeah <laughs> that's I'm always living the dream yeah must be a Max saying that everyone I know we're, we're always saying that as well yeah living the dream <laughs> So, yeah. Quality. So uh, you're going to be at Cage Warriors? Yeah. Like, um, I've got ca- yeah, I've got cage side seats, but then I don't know whether I'd probably be helping out with like corner or anything like that, you know, helping right. run around and get a few things started because, you know, Matt will be behind the scenes of everybody and we've got quite a few guys on. So he usually needs a bit of help, you know, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I'll be there either way. Um, and it'll be really good. I actually can't wait. I'm really excited for it. So <laughs> I'm excited yeah. for my fight this you know this weekend coming but I'm also even more excited as well um for Man- for Cage Warriors being in Manchester because I, I just love watching MMA as well I'm a proper like MMA nerd so uh, I can't wait for that who's your biggest inspiration then obviously with being a proper fan have you been watching it since a little age or yeah I've been watching it's, it's weird like I remember um it's just all different like aspects of MMA is because when I was little, um, you know, watching Ricky Atten and Amir Khan and, and boxing mostly because, like, my granddad yeah. watched boxing, my dad watches boxing, and I remember being, like, woken up. I used to say, wake me up when the, when it's on, and I'd just be staying at my nana's, and she'd wake me up at, like, three in the morning, and we'd go down and watch, you know, someone get knocked out in about five seconds, and, like, right, back to bed, and then we'd go back <laughs> to bed. And, um, and then I started watching, I think it was all the random MMA channels that are on Sky, like, years ago, and then EFC yeah. started getting put on Sky. And then... Um, I just really liked it. Like, I just always wanted to watch it. And growing up with two brothers, you know, just constantly fighting, constantly got black eyes and bruises and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, eventually figuring out, like, all these different promotions that are out there and everything, you know, especially with it rising in the UK. um, More channels are coming through that you can watch that on. But, yeah, I think more recently than anyone, um, obviously Valentina Shevchenko, um, I feel like my style is, like, her but in 10 years. Like yeah. if I, you know, if I could get to that level yeah. in, in, you know, in 10 years time, I'd want to have like as crisp as striking and wrestling. And she's, I feel like she's just an all round fighter, especially being a Southpaw as well. Um, you know, get quite a lot of inspiration and when watching her fights, get a few tips and, and tricks from there as to, you know, how she gets in on entries and stuff like that from Southpaw. It's a bit difficult, but yeah, I would say Shevchenko at the moment. Um, but yeah, even all the, all the male fighters as well. Like I just love watching anything, you know, from prelims to, to main main event, you know, f- find it always quite entertaining. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quality. Well, thanks for coming on. Looking forward to uh, speaking to you again. I'll probably see you at Cage Warriors at some point. Yeah, and, uh, I'll be there. <laughs> before you go, is there any shout-outs you want to give? Um, just basically everybody who supported me so far, you know, um, throughout my amateur career, all my, my sponsors and um, just the team at SBG, you know, making us better every day. So, yeah, big shout-out to all those guys. Right, well, good it. luck on your fight and uh, catch you. you soon. You too. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye bye. Cheers.